Well, here's a description of sleeping under the tree of life, which we'll be discussing in just a moment. It goes, readers, into these poems and stories the way some souls into church, a quiet garden or a stand of trees, for rest, for the blessing of silence and reverie, for beauty, if not redemption, unquote. Well, we're curious Well done, now. Brian. Thank you. <laughs> Scene. It sounds like bliss in a book to us, but before we talk about that book with its author, Cherie Renee Thomas, we're going to discuss some dark matters. That's a title, not a warning. It's Thomas's anthology series of speculative fiction written by people of color. There's a documentary about that called Invisible Universe, and you'll see Cherie and her work mentioned right here in this trailer. Check it out. When I was young, I was fascinated by the many genres that made up speculative fiction. But in reality, my love for fantasy, horror, and science fiction was bittersweet, because I never really saw myself in these worlds, at least not in the way that I wanted to be seen. I decided to begin a journey to tell the history of images like my own in the genres. He may just have never occurred to him to, to, to say, why don't you come to a science fiction convention? He was going to them. Uh, but it also, he may have been slightly embarrassed to wonder you, how you introduce a, a black young man into uh, all of this. I can remember sitting next to um, an editor at a science fiction convention, and he said he didn't feel that race should be used in science fiction, that black people should appear in science fiction, unless there was some kind of racial point to be made. You mean to tell me no one's taken any of the short fiction by all these other black science fiction writers and put it together in one book so that we could read that? And it just kind of bothered me. And about three o'clock in the morning, I just woke up and I was just like, it'd be a great idea if I did this myself. <laughs> Our society is changing and the fact that formerly disenfranchised, marginalized, ignored groups are finally having that critical mass of a voice that's necessary to overcome those gatekeepers is really what we're seeing. You know, because, I mean, we've always been here. But all of this work seemed to be in stark contrast to what was going on in the real world. A conflict of imagination between those wielding authority and those wielding their pens. And as I did more research, I realized that this was not the first time that this happened in the genres that struggle and speculation historically went hand in hand. Travel with me as I go into the past to find our future in the world of speculative fiction. Travel with me into the invisible universe. As Brian mentioned, we just saw a little snippet of Sri Renee Thomas and her Dark Matter series in the trailer for Invisible Universe. But right now, we've got way more than a snippet with us here in the studio. We are honored, we are happy to have Cherie Renee Thomas live and in person, editor, anthologist, poet, and now the author of a new book called Sleeping Under the Tree of Life. Welcome to BK Live, Cherie. Thank you for being Hi, here. It's a pleasure you. to meet you. Thank so you. right off the top, Justin Bryan produced this segment. He said, we're gonna do something on speculative fiction. And I'm very like, you know, I said, Justin, isn't all fiction <laughs> speculative? Like, what is that thing? So yeah. disabuse me of my ignorance. <laughs> well, all fiction is speculative in the sense that it asks the question, what if? But not all fiction answers the way speculative fiction does. And, and that's how you get genres. If you're asking the question of what do people fall in love, and the emphasis is going to be on the romance and that experience, that's the romance genre. And if it's horror, it's going to be on the fear, you mm -hmm. know. But if it's speculative fiction, you change the rules. So the laws of physics may be different. You may time travel. There may be a whole new universe of, of rules. And that's what makes it different. It's not the question, it's the answer. I love that. Yeah. I'm so into time traveling and, <laughs> really? you know, the genre therein. Let's talk about Sleeping Under the Tree of Life. I'm always curious, what went into completing this new work of yours? Oh, wow. Um, one of my favorite poets um, is Lucille Clifton. And she has a book called Blessing the Boats, Quilting, um, and also um, a book called Two-Headed Woman. And I kind of think of myself as a two-headed woman because I write with two hands. So I write poetry and I write short stories. But they always have that weird, you know, vein through it of speculative, mm -hmm. you know, weird stuff in it. So Sleeping on the Tree of Life, um, Tree of Life is a quilting pattern, but um, 
I was thinking about the origins and, and you know, where do we go, you know, from getting kicked out of the garden and moving forward through life. So the collection is kind of exploring um, historiography, um, it's excavation, mm -hmm. it's um, reimagining mythology, and it explores things as, you know, as, as common as gentrification in Memphis is where I'm from, okay. and it just kind of runs the gamut. So there's this thread that goes all the way through it of the wild forest and everything. Well, I'm, I'm sort of wrapped up in what you're saying. I <laughs> just totally went in. But in addition to that, these two hands also helped to uh, uh, edit Obsidian. Oh, yeah. Literar yeah. Literature and Arts in the African Diaspora. Yeah. What is it about the African Diaspora that informs the work and the way that the fiction, the speculative fiction, is different than other mass, I don't want to say produced, but just right. from other perspectives? Is there a special thing that... Well, Being it's the, the people. It? It's the story of the people. It's, um, it's you know, we all we all come from Africa, mm -hmm. but we move all across the world, and you have readapted your culture and created new art, new forms. But you're still imprinted and affected by that that larger um, 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 basis. So, the Obsidian, which is a very old journal, um, has been publishing continuously for about 40 years, um, from the Black Arts Movement. Um, explores um, literature um, in terms of short stories and poetry, scholarship, drama, visual art. Um, and I was asked to do a special edition um, looking at the black imagination in the arts. So it was pretty exciting to work on that. Yeah. Can you talk specifically about some of, I mean, you're going to read a poem for us. Yeah. I'm curious. I say I'm obsessed with, with time, time travel, travel, but it's something like Back to the Future, which is a very mainstream sort of white, if I may, way to look at time travel. Can you tell us about specific stories of your own and other people's that you think really advance the genre of speculative fiction? I don't really fiction? do time travel, so I could talk about mm -hmm. Walter Mosley. Um, who yes. I believe is in Brooklyn also, and I can talk about um, Octavia Butler. Um, he did, uh, Walter Mosley did a book called uh, 47, um, which takes you back in time, just like Octavia Butler's Kindred novel did. And she went back in time. She had a character who was from the 70s um, in an interracial marriage who somehow moves into a new home and finds herself being pulled back to um, a plantation in Baltimore and the past, and it's her ancestral plantation where her her um, family had been enslaved, so it's that journey back. So time, you're like back to the future, you're going to the future. Um, some of the stories takes us back into the past mm -hmm. to do some of that excavation and dealing with, you know, trauma and, and healing, so, yeah. So read us something. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right. Sing for your supper. What All right, sing for my here? supper. Well, since it's Women's History Month, um, I think I'll read a poem that sort of celebrates women, mm -hmm. and this one is called the silent ones. There are souls he can take a twisted limb, a diviner stick, and point fingertips to water, trail, or ditch. They can find the first drops in the earth's throat and quench your thirst before it begins. Some women can lend the moonlight from their own shining foreheads, turn tides with the sway of their hips, fishwife and midwife to the ages. They deliver loaves of bread and seeds to feed the lonely before night ends. Then others can build shelter from rock, draw comfort from a stone. No patch of earth can refuse to release its fruit into her waiting hand. You will know her in silence. You will know her in stillness. You will know when a star crosses her full mouth. You're asking questions, but she has nothing to say because the answers are in the work and the story is all in her eyes. Thank you. Wow. Happy Women's History. <laughs> I Celebrate the women and the artists. Yes, please. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, where do you see the influence of speculative fiction maybe in pop culture today and say a wow. movie like Get Out, which wow. Brian saw, you know that? <laughs> I mean, that movie made $100 million, right? So yeah. I'm wondering if, you know, Jordan Peele maybe is an example of the influence yeah. of speculative fiction. I'm excited about it. I mean, Jordan Peele um, just busted the door open, I hope, for many, many, many other writers and artists yes. and proved the lie to the, que to the question, can a black horror movie sell? Um, well, of course it can, <laughs> you know, and many more. So like, I want you to write one. I want us to work on some others. I want some obsidian stories. I'm in a new collection of black women horror stories called Sycorax's Daughters, all horrors. We want to see a, a dark matter series, anthology series, or you know, our version of Black Mirror, yes, you know. Please. But um, yeah, he, um, he used the term social thriller. So you think of like Rosemary's Baby mm -hmm. or some of those films. And that's a way you kind of get away, get around the ick factor of people who think they don't like horror movies, who think mm -hmm. it's just slasher films or yeah. what have you. And that is a psychological um, 
Tara, this yeah. movie is really disturbing. I thought about it like days and days after watching it. It yeah. was hilarious too. So let's just, <laughs> let's just say that it's really funny too. But um, yeah, it's definitely part of that in that umbrella of mm -hmm. speculative fiction because he asks a good question, but he takes it in a very literal and creepy. Yeah. area with a little hand waving about science so yeah so I want to talk to about like continuing to expand that circle and uh, these stories that mine the inner lives of the Afri African diaspora without being in relation to others mm -hmm. where it's not the story is this or because of a foreign outside influence where it is the African diaspora talking about issues that are germane to them without having it be at the intersection of where whiteness comes into the lives of these people. Oh, okay, so now you're on a Tony Morrison tip. See, Tony <laughs> Morrison gave us permission that you can write whole novels and not necessarily have to even include, you know, yeah. the majority culture necessarily because we have other stories. And I won't put anything, I won't say anything prescriptive. There's so much work out there, so many writers, and if I took one writer like Linda Addison or I took um, Andrea Harrison or Nadia Okorafor mm -hmm. and picked any number of stories from them, they're not going to be the same. They're going to have different um, themes and interests. So I, I won't say that there's one characteristic of work that's coming out of the African diaspora. Some of it may just be, you know, focused on people of color, whatever, but there's all kinds of stories gotcha. in it. You know, even um, thinking of Nora K. Jemison, you mm -hmm. know, she does these wonderful um, world building novels, fantasy novels that you might feel like, oh, this might be based on this culture here okay. and there, but they're really new from her imagination, oh. you right. know, so you can't really color them one way or the other. So we're going to have a snow day tomorrow in our last <laughs> 10 seconds. Once we're done watching Back to the Future, give me like a little reading list to my snowbound oh my reading gosh. list Since to expand our brains. Anthology series. Yeah. If you like George Clinton, um, I would say reach back and find a series called um, Cosmic Slop. It has uh, one of the stories is based on the Space Traders by Derek Bell, mm -hmm. um, and it stars Robert Guillaume, and it's really disturbing. TV's and I think very seen. timely, actually, very timely for this political uh, yes. <laughs> period. Uh, you heard it. <laughs> Renee Thomas, thank you very much for being here. Thank Sleeping you. Under the Tree of Life is the new book. Check out Dark Matter. Check out everything Cosmic Invisible Slop. Universe. Yeah, Cosmic Slop. All that. Sheree, thank you very much thank for being you. here.